so I'll just remove everything. So we have multiple filters here. So the ones which we have, we you both have seen like this one. If you drag and drop, you'll just get clearest, and you can just have the quick filters here. So this is kind of a filters which you both have seen. But there are other filters in Tableau. So which could be like if you right click on this data source you could see here on here edit data source filters so if you add it and give add so maybe I would like to maybe I'll just select the region filter so I can I'm just selecting the south region so our underlying data you need not add filters here it's actually filter on our data source itself so the all the sheets and all the dashboards which you create on this particular dashboard will have only the data of south region so if you really want to change it you have to go back here and change it again get it Sivan Shankar yep. so it's like something which you have a uh, your filter out the entrance of your house or your office system so that's what this works so other few filters are like maybe I can I had some screenshot of this this is from the web so these are the types of uh, filters in Tableau uh, extract filters, data source filters I, I'll talk about the context filters and the table calc filters maybe at the later stage of our training so the filters which I like to talk about now is the extract filters data source filters dimension filters and mesh filters so which you know this dimension filter and mesh filters are nothing but the ones which we have here so if we had uh, any drag and drop on this particular thing if it's a uh, Dimensions go we call it as dimension filter and if it's a measure if gone we call this a measure filter and this particular thing which I showed you is the data source filter and extract filters are nothing but it's kind of a top level for it so right now we have used it as a live connection that's why you could see the just a single cylinder with a tick maybe I'll try to make this as an extra data so the filters which you add here so it by default Tableau just took of my data source filter here but if you are really do not want like that you can always remove it and just add something else if you say for example I'll just go ship mode I'll just select the first class and extract so it's gonna just ask something I'll just have sample one so as you know extract is nothing but the offline data of our file or the source so as we have given the uh, this particular filter ship mode is equal to first class the tableau gonna download only the uh, offline data of this particular field for I mean to say only the first class records has been downloaded to our uh, our local machine so even if you could see on our data source filter we just go here and the ship mode so you could see that you could see only the first class because the extract filters is the highest level of filter and we have filtered out only uh, the first class so only the first class is allowed here so that's why you could see even here if you could see only the first class so this filter should be helpful for you in cases where you have a very huge database and you really need not to work on everything you need not download everything maybe say example you have like 20 years of data and you just want to work on the last two years or three years so you can just make use of it or also the other good thing is you can even make this filters dynamic I will show you this on the later classes to how to make this filters dynamic so only the uh, particular filter I mean the particular records which match our uh, conditions should be available on our dashboard so instead of us adding every time on this particular filter the tableau does it by itself using the data source filter or the extract filters any doubts Steven Shankar I'm okay thanks uh, great thanks yep so these are few filters another thing which I like to show here is about the sets like we got something called like let me just show here for customer name create set so I'll just use all I can have like by field top 10 and maybe by sales or average it's up to you so the I'm just gonna say top 10 customers 
by sales. So this set which just segregates our data based on the condition which are given here. So it's going to take the top 10 uh, top 10 customers who has the highest sales. So let's just show you for example here customer name of their sales the bar chart I'm just ordering them by their sales so if you just add here so you could see these are the 10 people who are on the our top 10 list and these are the guys who are not in the list I can even add this as a filter and just select only the in so the guys who are in the who are in the top 10 list so this way I can have a review filtered for only the uh, the set which uh, the condition which I given here even I can make this dynamic so I'll just help you to make it creating a parameter I'll just have like enter in an integer and clicking OK show parameter control so I just got here I'll just make it 10 uh, right now I'm not configured the set to uh, use this data so I'm just going on the set right click edit set on the top tab like top if you click the drop down here which you could see like we have the parameters list of all the parameters so we got like enter n okay so if you make it top five we got only the top five top five customers so this way for you uh, Steve and Shankar you could uh, filter out based upon your requirements say top 10 persons of particular team or top 10 by particular values it's up to you to make it decide how what can be your top 10 list or the bottom list so if you want to see the bottom here so you just need to change the drop down to bottom and click OK so these are the bottom 10 guys of our of a shop you could say like maybe the superstore any doubts on this Steve and Shankar I'm okay okay that works mm -hmm. that will be helpful for you in case of Steve like it will be helpful for to you on uh, to get only the top five who got the highest uh, say who are on the complaint list or maybe the top ten plum ballers so I mean uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Plum optimist, yeah. So for the pronunciation. So in case of Shankar, it could be like the top ten uh, resources who have been giving given the more, uh, like say the more allocation or more be the more work. So in that way, you can make use of the this particular set. So you can either use it on the filters or even you could just have it on the color. So if you could see here, just you can just see. I just see them on the same colors. Let me just check it. They are colored, but as we have, they are very small in size. So I'm just changing to again to the top, so it will be easier for us. So you could see the top. These are the top five. So even this could be used as a highlighter or on any charts you can make use of this to be color so you can just highlight the top 10 or top 5 or even the top 1 so it's up to you to make use of the this particular set function and if you're going to use set I just want you to both both of you to have in mind when you're going to use a set make sure if you are adding some filters like say I'm just going to use here I'll just make this a show filter so for our example I'll just remove Mark Cousins from the list so if you could see you might have expected that uh, the gym app could be highlighted as the top one but whereas it did not it's because like this particular set function expert, uh, expects the uh, context filter so if you just right click and add to context if you, can you see so if you just click it, it's going to say the, the filters which you added into a, the add to context thing. So that will be considered for the set. So if you could see now, as I said, like Jim Mip is the top first when I, as I removed the Mark Cousins from the list. 
So when you're going to use the top end, make sure you, you add the uh, filters to context. If you really need that way, if you are not, if you do not want like that way, if you're happy, if you remove markers into the, he should be the top first. Whatever happens, he should be the top first. Then you can always have it as a normal one. So, um, I've got a question, uh, Rajiv. Like, so this basically it was showing the Mark Cousin guy as the he was the guy who did more sales as per that mm -hmm. thingy. So mm -hmm. you you deliberately want to hide that person. You just you you, you want to take that off the list. Mm -hmm. So that's why you actually put in a context filter to take that name off. Is that right? Or, uh, yes, yes, yes. So if you could see, like maybe instead of having customer, I can show you best example would be the time period. So. See, let me just show the auto date. Go for years. I'll make the quick filter come here. So if you could see, Mark Cousins has got the highest sales for all the years. So when I just change it, it's still showing the Mark Cousins, but it could be someone else. So if you just make it as a add to context, which I'm not sure about it. Let's see. Jipim. So for the year, two thousand. Like I guess, uh, Mark Cousins had the highest sales on the two thousand fourteen. That's why he was on the top one. You get it? Wait, let me. Yeah. I think I just confused you both. Like I'll just show you by adding. Like we see here. By removing two thousand fourteen, when it's not a context filter so you could see that mark is in our not our list like it should be probably showing the zip pip as the highest one why when you really need not want to skip the 2014 sales data so if you're adding it to the context will help you to make sure that it, it takes account the year of data also when the uh, set has been computer so that's why I'm uh, advising you both to use the context filter when you want the data to be uh, taken to the filters to be uh, taken to the context get it Steve get it Shankar mm -hmm. I think so yeah I just yeah. have a play around so. yeah you can try it maybe you can just get back to me if you're facing any issues so this is the context filter so the one the, which is here mm -hmm. as I said before like everything looks very easy when you do that on the screen and when I see that on the screen but when I go away and then do it Mm -hmm. Probably that's when it starts. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's a part of it. Yes, yes. So this is the other functionality which I wanted to say, like the sets, the different types of filters. Then I like to just give you a very high level. I'm not gonna. I will talk about it later very detailedly. But this, uh, the table calculations which I might have not really touched to either of you. So I just want to give you a uh, high level information like what it could give you and we can maybe try it on our later classes. So I'm just uh, creating a simple dashboard, like a simple report to have like the order name here, the year here, regions here, and just remove the next step filters which I had. So if you could see here, our data has been uh, divided by the region and the years. So if you want to know what is the sum, like we do have some uh, functionality called subtotals here. So if you could see here, if you just make it show row grand totals or column grand totals, which will help you with that. So which can give you something like this. This is also the one thing which I will be covering later. But instead of using the grand total, I can make it maybe come in the just the tooltip. So I'm just undoing it. So I wanted to show you how what's the calculated field works. So the table calculation works. The one here which you could see the table calculations. So I like to show you the window sum, window count, 
un few things here so we just write something window underscore sum sum of sales the calculation is valid and just have like total sales and okay and adding this to the tooltip so if you right click on this particular can you see the triangle here the near the total sales both of you yeah so that triangle means that it's a table calculation so it says like we could say the tableau to show the this particular calculation to either run on the row or the column or it's up to us so if you just right click here on compute using so you can just say like table across Ta table across should be like if it's going to be like along the years so if table down is nothing but along the regions I wanted to see the total sales of everything so I can just click the table across and then or down and then so it's going to add up everything so I'll just show you how it works so I just selected the table across and down so it gives us the total sales of everything can you see it wherever I hover it on the total sales I can see 2 million so that's our total sales for all the four years in all the four regions so do we both get it like how this table calculation works uh, at least the uh, across and then works yeah Steve uh, yes yeah so this way I can actually show you say like if you have it as table across which is nothing but our region so on the tooltip the total sales gives you the uh, our sales for that particular region across all the years so this way I can say these are my regional sales for all the years or I can just change it to table down which is just gonna give me the annual like all the regions sales for that particular year so if you could see here it's 484,000 and here if you could see so if I'm not using this it's sometimes uh, like it would be tough for us to calculate what is this or it could be our manual work to add it so that's where the table calculation comes in and in some cases what is the difference mm -hmm. so, sorry what is the difference between across and down and down and across because ultimately it's going to sum up everything yes this party these two right yeah it's actually as far as uh, I've seen it's gonna do everything together so even if okay. it goes down and this way or this way and down it's gonna be same so I real I've never got the scenario where I've seen both gives a different value it gives the same value so it shouldn't be okay fair place. enough yeah yeah and giving the cell if you could see here like there are three other options so giving the cell which actually gives us nothing but the same as our sales so it's shows it sums up the values in say the particular cell that's what we are saying by selecting computer using cell gives us get it Steve and Shankar yep, yep. so other options which you could see here order date region so this is nothing but uh, kind of a very similar to here so table across is actually the region and table down is actually the order date even though it's kind of uh, we have it on separate ways like you can either use table across or the region so if you can see here so just if you just hover over here this particular if you could see the results are computed computer along region for each year of order date so that's what selecting that will just give you so we are saying compute along the regions for each of the years so if you could see here so do you both get it or shall I just repeat it um, okay. I think I'm okay to you mm -hmm. so this way we can make use of the table calculations to say compute only this or this if you have like even multiple dimensions I guess like I could show you some examples on the later of our training we can say the tableau to give me total or average or just give the count of something so it could be useful the other small tip which I can say is that if you are 
really confused so which to select whether it should be this or this I just suggest you to go to the edit table calculation go here so you can just select whichever you want any dimension or this thing and when you hover over it you will get the like how it is computer the results are computed for each region and area of order so it's gonna be showing us for the cell actually for our case it's gonna be showing for everything so I think I can give you best example on the later of our training using this so if you're gonna use our uh, like uh, calculated field sometimes using calculated fields will not give us proper results using the subtotals so it would be even though for this example I can very well go ahead with the grand totals like let me just move it here so this grand totals cannot be shown into our tooltip so which obviously makes us to go ahead with the table calculation and this sometimes would not work properly so we would all we would go ahead with the table calculation to get our overall total or average something so if you if you put this in a dashboard mm -hmm. and if if somebody is going to look at this uh, who doesn't have access to the back end of the other data so you have to define the tooltip isn't it to see that data or by default well, if the way you have set it up it should come up so I'm just saying like you should set that grand total or you should set that sum on the tooltip to show that value uh, tooltip is actually just I think but it's gonna show us the value which are in a view so if the end user does not have access to this that tooltip also will be blank or even it will be nothing so he can just uh, he can even even not see this box itself the tooltip box. Okay the, the reason mm -hmm. sorry the reason why I asked is because you said sometimes a grand total might not work mm -hmm. so in that case if I don't create a grand total then I have to make sure I give him a tooltip yes, yes. Some, so that he can actually see. Yes yes so you can just drag to the tooltip so it just automatically shows you up so it's okay this tooltip is nothing but it's going to be our data it's nothing different from our data it's if he access he has access to this particular data it works so that's what okay okay and uh, is there any other particular examples which you want me to try on you know, Steve or Shankar No, nothing I can think of. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I think I'm okay for now too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can just help you on creating some. Let me just go ahead with some simple dashboard. Custom mm -hmm. name into the I'll go ahead with a very simple dashboard. May across time, so I guess that would be helpful for you. Let's add sales here. I'll add the profit here. Switch on circle. So, terms of customers, I can like to try with um, cities. Adding my order date. So, adding my order date to the page here will give us something like this. So, this way, I okay, if you just this will be kind of a animation which actually works only on Tableau Reader and tableau desktop not on our tableau server or the tableau online so this is actually a kind of a limited functionality you should say but we might expect it to be uh, like available to our tableau server and tableau online so how we can make use of this functionality is like I can just show you for months so instead of the user changing the drop down or the filter to change values I can just click this button so our dashboard just cycles through all the values for each month if you could see here July August so it's going to just gonna cycle over all the months get it Steven Shankar yeah it's very good actually yeah mm -hmm. this I can just have some like we got something here called uh, show history I'm just showing for all so this way I can make the tableau show us the uh, the history how our data was so if you can see the highlighted ones 
So this was a data for particular March month. If you could, I can just show you like this way from January. The grayed out or no, nothing but the, the older month's values. So you could see how our data has gone over time. So the brighter ones are the ones uh, which is for the December and the lighter ones are for older. So I could say we had touched our extreme on this particular city, New York City for the September, which had a very high sales and also the profit. But whereas on our current month, December, I guess we got only about just eight, maybe three-fourths of the sales and profit which we had previously for this particular month. Get it, Steve and Shankar? Yes. So I can even play around with it like we got the loop playback. If I did this, it's going to be just rotating around. Like I mean, it's cycling through without any stops. So this could, I can just, just speed up. This is kind of a speed. So if you just click it, it's going to go very faster, slower, medium. And this is going to be just if you want to look it on the opposite direction. So you can just make it of the, this is just a stop button. So even this, you can write this particular page, we call it as page animation. So this page animation, you can use it on a line chart. So the line will actually move. Uh, I can just show you. If you like. And is it possible to write some text boxes around it, like say sort of insert a text box and then say add some comments or notes against it for each of the sheets? Mm. For the, these things we can give like the parameters or something, we can actually give the comments here. So you could just enter. For the sheets, I really have not seen it. Like we can have... Because what might be useful? Mm -hmm. Sorry, when, when you finish. No, I... What I want to say, we have something called description. Uh, I'm just missing not here. Mm. Just try to find it. Mm. We have something called description. I I'm not quite sure where exactly. I have never really used it. But we have called something called description, which you can even make it. But it's going to be static. If you have typed it, the end user may not be able to edit it or even you can if you're really interested to see the description for it you can just add a text box here and add something and you just give okay you just have something like that use this you can give some notes tips or even some values to be shown dynamically okay so yeah that's what I wanted to ask because when you when you present it to management mm -hmm. You have to probably put some words around it mm -hmm. as to why, what, what that means. Mm -hmm. Yes, I get it. Yeah. So I'm just, I just want to make two as a proper line. It's not really line. I just seem to.
uh, Steven Shankar, like, I'm just sorry I couldn't really make it. I, I can just try it and show you on the next session. So what I'm expecting is like something as, instead of just the uh, dots are moving, the line would be actually moving. So it would be like a kind of a animation thing. So, yeah. So, sorry, you guys. Yeah. So I'm just going back to my scatterplot example. So we can even have something like uh, the selected one. So unless you select it, you would not see the history. So if you just click it, so these are the histories if you could see. So for this is for the March and this is for the August. So let me just make sure it just have it colored so it will be safe for you. So these are the Seattle's each month's sales and profits. So this way you can make use of this particular page animation yeah, to be useful. The page animation, this uh, as I said, this dynamic view, this if you click it, it runs out of it. it. Only this particular thing will not be available for the end user at the Tableau server or the Tableau online. But they can make use of this particular if you click it, you can see the history. That would work well. So, do you get it, Shankar and Steve? Like, what the what's the limitation of this particular page animation? Uh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, could you say that again, please? Sorry, I missed it. No. What I said is uh, the page animation thing really does not work on our Tableau server or Tableau online. If you host it on the online, this animation thing will not work. And but when okay. you Click it, you can see the history. This thing will work. The showing history will work on the Tableau server and Tableau online, but only this, uh, the kind of a motion thing which you could see, that won't really work on the Tableau server online. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. So I'm just removing it here. And this relative date, the filter, can you see it here, both of you? Yes. So having the relate, having the relative date here, so you can just select yesterday or today. I like, uh, just give me a moment. Just hide this thing. Our data, I guess, like it's uh, from. I guess it's not for today's date. So I'm just making it show filter instead of having today. I'll just show it for previous year. Yeah, I guess we have data only for 2015, so that's why when I select the previous year, I could see data here. So this way, instead of the user selecting the date manually each day, they can use the relative time period. So I could say like show for the last three years, two years even. In case if we have for current years data on our data source, it will be working. Uh, I'll just we have something called anchor relative to, so I'll just change this to last year. So we'll just change the time. So I'm taking you guys to the past. We are going on time traveling. So this yeah. way, I've actually like uh, made the instead of going with the uh, today, it shows like anchor week. Or instead of showing this week, it's showing anchor week. And if you go here, it's going to show anchor day. Anchor day is nothing but 10-3-2015. So I can always use of make use of this so I, to show what's for the previous day, if you have data for the next day, in case there could be some forecast values or something, or predicted values which you have on your database itself. This way you can make use of this particular relative filter, so it will be useful for you, for your end users to work on time. Get it, guys? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's great. And on the filters, like we do have some like I'll just go back to our normal filter. It would be like years or something. So I can have conditions here also. If you could see the condition by field, so I can say sales. 
uh, greater than or equal to let's have like hundred thousands so having like this I, I would be seeing data only for the uh, like instead of I adding like sales which is greater than or equal to I can just give here on the uh, just give me a second or here itself so instead of having like two different uh, filters to filter out I can just make use of this thing so our data which you could see here just filters only the values of it so let me just check how it goes Like I was expecting these guys to be not shown. Like, wait, let me try. Yes, customer name, customer name. Yeah, here we go. Like, it was my mistake. I was adding city here and I was checking for it. So, um, instead of I adding like filter sales to filter it out, I've just made the our existing filter like to show the customers who are who has sales greater than ten thousand. So this way, if you could see on the scale if you could see like everyone you could see the customers who have more than 10,000 sales so this way you can avoid a uh, use of a filter so this will the level of filter would work on the customers so that's what this particular thing works even I could show something like the top 10 by sales Make it top two. So you could see only the just the top two guys here who like based on their sales. Get it, Steven Shankar? Yeah, but they, they have to turn it off. You have to turn the filter off if you don't want the filter. And I know it's a stupid it might be a stupid question, but mm -hmm. because if, if if that if because you already have a filter and you're creating kind of a filter within a filter. Mm -hmm. So do you have to create the subset filter or the filter you have created within it? Do you have to turn it off before you go back or on that dashboard or on that sheet? Or because you have, you have created a filter for custom name, customer name, and within that you have created another filter for the top ten sales data or top, basically filter for top ten to pull the data out. Mm -hmm. So do we have to when, when we no longer need it? Do we have to turn it off or? Yeah, if I, you really don't need it, like you can go it on turn it off just by clicking none like this has limitation that this will filter out only based on the customer name we could have our yes. views so dynamically like in some cases like on our next classes we'll be working on maybe just the damage like 
we will not be dragging drop everything. We'll just have a drag and drop where we will sell a customer or product name. So in that case, we might end up this filter setting it only at the level of customer. Like if you could see before, I had something like this. So even though this is showing the sales is under, it actually filters the records or uh, maybe at the internal which you, you may not be able to see it here. So that's why we are seeing the sales as 100 and uh, 837. So it limits our filter to only this particular dimension. So if you really need not need it, you can always turn it off. So just by clicking top and none, I will just make sure that you do not, that's not impacting your filters. Okay. The, sorry, the reason why I asked it is because if you start creating things like that, then you'll have to, you need one sheet you need one sheet every for everything, isn't it? Like on this one, you have created a filter for customer name mm -hmm. and the subset filter for a sales. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do something similar on sales and then by customer name, things like that. So is that how it works? Like so, you have to create a sheet for each of them, or you can actually, if you want to show them as a sub on the dashboard separately, so you have to create an individual sheet for them. Mm -hmm. I did not get to your question, Shankar. Can you just come again? Sorry, sorry. If you want this sheet, like the ones you've shown me now, like on the customer name, mm -hmm. the subset of sales data filter, mm -hmm. if this has to go on a dashboard on some corner of a dashboard top corner, mm -hmm. and if also want, if somebody else wants another one where he wants it by sales and by customer, it's a kind of a swap. Uh, just uh, um, switch, switch uh, the titles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to create another sheet and then do that. Yes, yes, you should be doing another one. Okay, so on that she will go onto the dashboard as well. So yes, so maybe I can just help okay. you out maybe on a later like how can we connect or maybe I guess like we I on our next classes I would your question might be clear if you you're still not getting it I can explain you later though. So I guess okay, okay, yeah. So uh, Steve, do you want to do any changes on that uh, our uh, dashboard which you created yesterday, like how did it go? Did you present to your manager? I just showed it um, this this morning, mm -hmm. um, and I got some initial feedback. And I have a few specific questions. Maybe you can you can help me with it. Yeah, uh, because I... it, like um, mm -hmm. like I heard earlier, it, you, you're absolutely right. It's it makes total sense and it's logical when you see someone else do it on the screen, but then when you have to do it yourself, mm -hmm. suddenly. The options are a lot more challenging to figure out exactly how to how to change. Yeah, yeah you're exactly bang on, Steve. I think I was trying a simple one yesterday, and then I was like, <laughs> this guy made it look like it was a walk in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I just open it, Steve? The file. Uh, please go ahead and open it. That one, the Steve four. Yeah. Yes, Steve. In this? No, I can't. See. Oh, yeah, I can't see it yet. It hasn't opened on my end. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you click on phlebotomy. Mm -hmm. And then, the right side, the. What do you call that again? The scatter plot. Mm -hmm. Scatter plot. Yes. I, I would like for all the the bubbles that are below the threshold, so below the red line, to be colored red. So how do you change the the gradation? I guess to to have the cutoff go coincide with the threshold instead of the I'm not sure what it is now. The average maybe. Let me check it. It's basically by their percentage of their values. So it's gonna just gonna based on the zero to fifty percentage. It just takes twenty five percent as the gray ones. So and the least one as. Yeah, so I, I would I would like to keep the the gradation the dark green to the dark red, but I would like to change the cutoff, which starts coloring the bubbles red when it's below the threshold instead of below the average. I guess. You know, to move to move the the the, the slider 
I, I guess maybe on the on the right for the measures. Visually, I want to portray all the ones that are below the quality threshold as um, as challenged, like need with so so yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, it makes me feel better that you have to think about it as well because I couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> no, I can either make these as green and these as red. That's easier for me. But you have asked me to. It's okay. Just give me a second. See, I'm just getting some calls. Like someone's calling me multiple times. Okay. Hi Steve, I take you had a you're already using this product. Sorry? I I I think that you already used started using this product, you were hands on on this product. I'm playing around with it a little bit, um not a huge amount of experience. In the past I've had some I did some work where I've had an analyst help me and prepare the data and import it into Tableau or really the only thing I was doing was dragging and dropping and, and choosing the visualizations and that worked well but then now starting from scratch it's much more much more challenging and I think the data that I'm using now is a little more complicated it needs a little more manipulations and cleaning up at the at the start so uh, so that's been has been a little bit of a challenge how about you uh, I'm, I'm kind of new to this. I, I kind of know what it can do and things like that, but uh, it's I'm, I'm pretty much starting from scratch myself. But I think oh. I, I'm quite I'm quite amazed with what it can do. Actually, I I'm pretty much used to doing everything in Excel, so you can imagine uh, the limitation in Excel, and then the way I mean the visualization. Excel can do. I mean, don't take me wrong, but Excel can do wonderful things. But in terms of conveying that message to the senior guys or the management guys, it's got a it's got some limitation, isn't it? I think that's where I think this product can push the gap, I think. Oh, very much so. And and why I like it a lot too is we have an analytics department in the organization, but it basically makes it so you're at least one more step removed from using your data. And so in this case it puts a lot of the the ownership with the with the with our department itself, where we can manipulate and get some initial visualizations from our own data, um, which has a much shorter turnaround time than needing a program or an analyst in a different department to to really manipulate and do some of the visualizations. So, yeah, yeah, true. Oh, uh, hey guys, I'm back. Yeah. Oh, great. And so, um, mm -hmm. Rajiv, my my goal is for this to be automatic. So that for all the all the different months, that the cutoff for the transition from green to red is basically linked to the threshold dynamically. Mm -hmm. So that for each each month and for each view for each me measure, that it automatically updates. Um, so uh, yeah, I figured it would take a some kind of a, a formula. Formula, <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm, just try it. It should be this, then threshold, then it should be red, so it should be green. It's red and Oops. Yeah. So is this the way you want it, Steve? Yeah, it's perfect. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That looks great. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? Can you can you show me again? Yeah, sure. So I'm just writing a formula where it just checks. We already have like threshold. Like it should be actually, if I'm right. It should be the percentage reference line, I would guess. Like this is the line which we have. 
so it's going to just check that value and if it is lesser than it, it's green. If it's more than it, it's red. So that's how it. And can we make it? Uh, can we have it have color gradation, or will it just be like a single color? There's no way to make it from dark green to dark red like we had before. Just have mm -hmm. a, a, a different cut off, a different transition. Mm, I doubt it. Let me just try it. If you, mm. because like we we can have one. If we gonna have like multiple dimensions. It's possible, but uh, we are going to use the measure, and the way you expect is like from the color ranges, the color should be very. So I'm just wondering. Let me try it here. Let's see if I can do that. No, Steve, when we have like, if you want something like this, uh, it's not really coming through. If I have both as discrete, it's possible, but uh, when we change our list, it would not be some of the few things would not be properly colored. So okay. I guess when we have a measure as a color, we can have only one measure. When we have a, a dimension, we can have multiple dimension. So that's how. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so yeah, the the view you had before then with just the red and the green would be, would be fine mm -hmm. as long as it changes with the with the threshold, threshold. and then mm -hmm. if you switch the measure will it automatically apply it to the other measures as well yes yes okay great yeah that's exactly what I was Maybe hoping for I can and go. then how would you relabel the green and the red this the yeah labels for the mm -hmm. for the on the right side I can maybe make it no, no, no. Mm. you see where it says red and green mm -hmm. under the Mm -hmm. Under the the controls. Mm -hmm. Yes. On the right. Yes. You good. Mm -hmm. Can I try something like compliant? Uh, yeah, the, it's I A N. Yeah. This one, right? So you just yeah, compliant I N T. T N T. Okay. And yeah, and then. Non-compliant. So you just did it in the formula? Yeah, I did it in the formula, and I'm just going to change it here. So the complaint would be green, and on complaint would be on red. I'm giving OK. So hmm. going back to our dashboard, like our color legend also says the same. So the end users can get it very easily, like what does the columns mean. And now in the dashboard, it doesn't even show. Oh, yeah, now it does. OK. Uh, Steve, is it that slow? Like I actually came to the dashboard like a, like 10, 15 seconds. Like is my internet connection slow or there? I'm just not quite sure. What about you, Shankar? Is it is it very lagging the presentation? No, I'm okay. I think here it's fine. Might be because we sit very closely to there. It could be. It's looking fine on my end too. Now, at least now it is. Mm -hmm. So no, as you said, like few times, like it's kind of, I guess it's kind of lagging, like it's very slow at your end. So I was just worried it's if it's me or if it's something. No. Yeah. It, it might be the the multiple connections, you know, like like it's trying to, you know, sh share your screen with mm -hmm. with two different destinations. So it might make, take more of your bandwidth. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be a problem because I have given like three, four people, and it was not. Issues that oh, yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, no issues. So, uh, I think I can. Anything else, Steve? Like before we close our session, like anything else you do? Do you want to talk about on the dashboard? Um. Uh, well, for the the calendar, I had one more question. Mm -hmm. The first one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because now we use a different data source, a different sheet. Mm -hmm. And in the tooltip, the definitions no longer show up when you hover over the cells. And I was wondering if there's an easy way to take the definitions from a different sheet and add them to the tooltip. Or, or would it be better to just copy the definitions into a new column in the source sheet and do it that way? 
Let me just try. You see now it just has the value as the bot, and in the past we, we used to have a definition as well. Mm -hmm. But then I realized the definition is no longer included in the the sheet in Excel. It's mm -hmm. in a different sheet. Mm -hmm. I get it. So I'll just check our data. Just okay. Yeah. So the these are the ones to you, the definitions. So we took, um, let's see, all of our data comes from the third sheet, trending 15, 16, Tableau. Mm -hmm. and, and the definitions I'd like to use are the column A, well, let's see, yeah, the column A in, uh, in that sheet. On the can, can you click on the next sheet to make sure? No, the second sheet. Maybe you already did, but on my side, it's it hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, it would have to come from the first sheet. Okay. It's column A in the first sheet. So that's what I'd like to include as the the definition um, under the tooltip. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you tell me how to best do it. Like copy paste it as a new column into the third sheet and work from there, or link it there or what would be or look at in the first sheet what do you think would be best mm, I think we can just uh, it's not really needed that I, we, I should add it here so because we have to repeat things so I just want to have this as in a new sheet and just uh, make it little editor or kind of like kind of a like what to say kind of a simpler way I can we used it and join it in our data source. So let's just have this here. Oh, you would add it to the data source? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll just join it. I guess for even for our last dashboards, I kind of did it. So let me just check if I have that thing. Should be this, I guess. But why would you make it a new sheet? Why wouldn't you include it in the existing data source uh, I can add it but uh, like think it I just will we it needs some manual efforts to like I have to add a column and I have to make sure it just matches up maybe I can have to write some V lookup or something to oh, do no, that you're right you're right so yeah. okay so we have to I for multiple because the rows no longer line up okay mm -hmm. it's a different format yeah. yeah yeah so it's good to have like for simplicity and for faster like I just make it no, new sheet where we'll just join based on the indicator value like let the yeah, 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 yeah that's a very good point okay yeah just lost so we just have to remove the unwanted rows so it will be easier for the tableau to work up on Okay, so you're gonna make a column with just the number of the of the indicator, and then a column with the B. Sorry, Steve, your voice is not clear. Oh, so your plan is to make a col column with the number mm -hmm. of, of the the definition, and then join them based on the number of the indicator? Yes, yes, Steve. Oh.
Shankar, is it getting late for you? All right. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, thanks. Oh, when do when do plan to? Uh... Mm -hmm. Sorry. Or or we finish uh, the is a uh, session finished or? Yeah, it's finished. Like... I have something else as well. Nothing else. It was just like. Uh... Okay. It's just uh, helping for uh, Steve to to show how we to join different sheets. So he had some requirement where. Okay, in that case. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I think I'll probably take leave. Thanks. Yeah, sure. If that is okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Thanks, thanks, so thanks, Roger. Thank. Yeah. yeah, bye. Bye, Shankar. Thank you. Uh, Steve, can I just stop recording your session or do you want me to continue with it? Steve? Steve, but if you don't have time, we can, I guess, do it later. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. No, I just wanted to ask if you do you want me to continue recording session or can I just stop it? Because we are just working on something is here. It's not really needed to be recorded. So I just want you to check. Sorry, what was that? So they couldn't hear you. Oh no, that's fine. Okay. So we have our description here. So is the sound bad on your end? Can you you cannot hear? Yeah, it's not clear. It's like kind of a cut, like it's kind of a part. That... Hmm. I guess yesterday we didn't face it, like or just today. So it could be, it might be your enterprise so Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So I'm just, it's just my assumption. Let's see. And is it fine, Steve? Like, I guess we might need some editing on our Excel file, this particular, like, this particular sheet to make sure we are showing only the required values here. But now it's actually showing us. Yeah, but it looks, it looks great. I can, I can clean it up. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe uh, files and then I, uh, I'll update it. Uh, sorry, what was your last line, Steve? Like I, I did not get it. Can you, does this is, can you send me, email me the files and I yes, will update? Sure, 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 sure. I'll email you. Email, please email Excel. Yeah, sure. And these. Tableau and I will. Yeah, sure, Steve. Can we close our session, Steve? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Steve. I'll just email these files. See you tomorrow, 10.30? Yeah, sure, Steve, 10.30. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Steve. Have a good day. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.